Hi everybody, my name is Nick and this is the first video in what I hope is a series teaching people about blockchain, crypto, NFTs, a lot of the basics so that they can look at other websites and services and, and have a better understanding of what they're all about. So you can see on my screen in front of you, it, this is a game that I'm working on. It's not even a functional prototype yet, but I have some of the basics down. I'm calling it Blockchain Banker. It, the rules are very similar to a game like Monopoly, but it is not Monopoly. Uh, it, instead of having a banker, we have an automated blockchain that's going to keep track of everybody's transactions. We're going to see everything that happens in the log. We're going to see everything in the game that happens in the real world log. I think it's going to be fairly informative. And after you see this video, you should be able to look at a Blockchain Explorer website and understand what you're looking at. Okay, so I think showing by example makes the most sense. Where we want to start is with the concept of wallets. So what is a blockchain wallet? Well, a blockchain wallet is a random number, basically, that can be used to have transactions, both uh, sending coins to that random number and receiving coins from that random number. Beyond it being a random number, it also has a password. And in this game, we're gonna be using a four digit pin. But in reality, when you create a blockchain wallet, you create a very long string and then a very long random password that's almost impossible to guess. If we click on new one player game, before we can set up our players, we're going to need to create the blockchain. We're going to need to create a wallet for the bank because the bank is where all the funds that we as players are going to play with. All those funds originate in the bank. So just like I was saying, if we create a bank wallet, we've now created this address and we've associated it with the nickname bank. But in reality, the wallet is really just this address. It also has a, a pin, which is being kept track of by the game itself that would allow us to spend from this wallet. But since this is a seemingly random string, we haven't even connected online. We haven't sent this wallet anywhere. It doesn't exist beyond our local view right here. So you can see that if we view the blockchain that we just created, this modified France 677, there are no transactions in the blockchain, so it may as well not exist. So our first step is going to be going to bank setup. We're going to create the BB coins that are going to get seeded into the bank wallet. This is a special command, but what it does is we'll look at our blockchain um, browser here. It signals the super user account, which is wallet address zero, to create 2,000 BB coins in the bank. In a blockchain like Bitcoin or Ethereum, this would have happened when the source code was first deployed. It would have had a few wallets that were designated as seed wallets, and all of the coins that will ever exist will have been placed in those wallets. There's some caveats there, but if you understand it that way, it, it should give you some functional knowledge. So all of the coins that we can ever play with in this game have now been created, and they are the property of the bank. You can see that the data here is initial load one player, so we know we're playing a one player game. This timestamp is the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. It's known as an epoch timestamp, and it includes uh, milliseconds as well because we needed more granularity. But again, these details are not super important. If we look at the bank's wallet detail page, you can see this is the number we generated before. The super user sent funds to it, and you can see that it has 20,000 BB coins now because our coin quantity here is 20,000. Okay, so what's next? Well, to continue setting up the bank, the bank also needs to have all of the house tokens that players can purchase and all of the hotel tokens that players can purchase. Now, what's the difference between a coin and a token? Well, a coin is that initial value that's intrinsic to the blockchain. So on the Bitcoin blockchain, the coin is a Bitcoin. On the Ethereum blockchain, it's an Ethereum. On the, Bi on the Binance blockchain, it's a Binance token. There are several large blockchains running. A lot of them are copies of the original Bitcoin or Ethereum blockchain. That just means it's, it's a group of people running a, the blockchain software on their computers in a connected network. Uh, we can talk about that more later, but for the time being, let's add houses and hotels to our bank. So if we click on Mint House Tokens, you can see the source wallet here, D09A7 blah blah blah, is the bank's nickname wallet. 
the destination, there is no destination since what we're doing is we're instructing via a set C as a smart contract. We want to create new tokens on this blockchain called house and we want to create 32 of them. There's a few things going on here so let me just break it down for you. You can see that there's no destination wallet. So what that means is that we are now, we're just registering an entry on the blockchain. We are paying to insert this data into the blockchain associated with our bank wallet. The pin that authorizes us to spend or insert or do anything with this wallet has been automatically put in this secret field. I don't even know what it is, but the system is keeping track of it. And you can see that in this system, in this simple learning exercise, data costs one gas, one BB coin per character of data entered into the blockchain. This will all make more sense in a minute, but so there's 16 characters. We're going to pay 16 in gas. Uh, we're paying it in BB coins because you always pay gas fees in the token that's native to the blockchain. And we're going to have the bank send this data. So you can see that we've, we've got a confirmation that sent BB coin. You can see that it says it was successful. If we click on verify, it pulls up our blockchain explorer again. We can see that the transaction that we just submitted, the bank to nowhere with zero coins moving and 16 gas to put in this data has now been interpreted by the software running the blockchain, the super user, that they need to create a new token called house and they're gonna create 32 of them. And this is gonna be sent to the bank address. So if we look at, we're in the wallet detail right now for the bank. You can see that now the, the 20,000 they start with has been debited 16 because it, our transaction was confirmed, it was accepted. So we were billed the gas fee. So now we have, uh, have 19,984 tokens left, but we've also received 32 houses from the super user account. So when you talk about tokens that you might buy on the Ethereum blockchain, things like mana tokens or new coins that are being pitched by YouTubers, what they're really doing is they're paying to mint a token and then they're selling you something that they created basically for nothing for the for the small gas fee they're selling you those tokens but they're not actually using the intrinsic coin to to do anything tokens just are created from nothing okay we'll close the wallet view we will mint our hotel tokens the same way. So all that's changed about this is instead of the word house, we have the word hotel. We're gonna create 12 of them instead of 32. Since the data contract is the same length, we're paying the same amount in gas. Submit that to the blockchain. It's confirmed. And if we look at our blockchain explorer again, blockchain content, you can see we have the same kind of transactions where the uh, super user has now minted, has created these hotel tokens and assigned them to the bank. If we look at the bank's wallet, now we have house, we have hotel, we have, and, and this number here is how it makes sure that it only mints one time. So there's a unique identifier that ends up getting attached so that these don't want to get duplicated. Okay, so now our bank is set up. We have all the cash that we're gonna be playing the game with. It's had its 32 in gas fees deducted, so 20,000, Minus 32 is 19,968, and we've created these new tokens. This is a game with a banker and no players. So how do we create a player? Well, players are really just wallets that are associated with a nickname and a color. So player one is red. We're gonna go back to our game setup here, and we're gonna create a wallet for player one. So even though I created this wallet, you can see that it has a nickname, but there's been no change in the blockchain. That wallet essentially doesn't exist until something is sent to it. We're going to do that now. So if we go back to our setup screen, we go to our player setup screen. You can see that this wallet, remember I told you that there's a public key, that this is the public key, and that there's also a private key. If we click on view pin, the spend key for this wallet is 9795. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard using control C, 9795, and close this screen. Now it tells you it's gonna delete them. It doesn't really delete them yet, but I plan on actually wiping it out. So if you lose your pin, you won't be able to access your funds, but that's something for another day. We're gonna click add starting funds to simulate the banker, which is this source wallet. You can see D09A, D09A is the bank, is sending to DEA1, 
DEA1 is the player, the bank is sending to the player the starting amount that this game um, gives every player when they begin the game, 1,500 tokens. It's adding some data to indicate that it's giving you your starting funds. So it's putting in the phrase starting funds. And in order to put that data in, it has to pay a, a gas fee again of 14 BB coins, which is a little, cheap, a little steep just to be putting in some text. But the banker is paying it, not the player. So maybe we don't really care that much. And the bank's pin has been automatically added. Anytime there's a bank action, it automatically puts in the bank's source wallet and the bank's pin. And we can't change any of these fields. Okay, so we're sending our starting funds to the player. So our next step is to look at the blockchain again. And you can see that the entry has been confirmed. We sent our starting funds to player one's wallet. We paid 14 in gas. So if we look at player one, they now have 1500 BB coins. This is the, the same way that all the tokens that you might trade, all those hundreds of tokens that YouTubers are pitching, that people are trying to shill all the time. This is really how that all works. Okay, so if we go back to our blockchain full listing, the bank's balance is now, it's starting balance 20,000 minus all these gas fees to pay for all the transactions minus the initial starting players uh, funds. So we're left with 18,454 BB coins in the bank and we're all ready to start playing the game. So this shows you, it's, it's really similar to what you'll see on a blockchain explorer. And I'm going to open another tab just to show you that. We are now on the blockchain.com website. This website will list all of the transactions that are happening on different types of crypto uh, blockchains. We're going to use Bitcoin just for the sake of example, but I'm going to show you how what we just saw in the game, how that applies in the real world. So if we go to blockchain.com, we go to Blockchain Explorer up the top. You can see that there's a, a lot of charts, a lot of information. It seems really overwhelming. What we're really going to do right now is just look at a single transaction that got entered on the blockchain. So I'm going to look down on these latest transactions. You can see some of them have large dollar amounts. Some of them have certain amounts. They all have these addresses that look like the addresses that we were just creating. I'm going to click on view all transactions. I'm going to pick a random one, but we want to show a simple example. So I'm going to find one where there's one from address and one to address. This is a pretty simple transaction. You can see that this user paid a fee, which is like a gas fee of 0.0000475 bitcoins which is not a huge amount of money. You can see that they were transferring 0.00342262 Bitcoins. So we convert it to US dollars. They paid a fee of $2.33 to send $167.77. We'll leave it in dollars for, for now. So if we look at the details of this transaction, you can see it hasn't been confirmed yet. That's based on a consensus, but we'll talk about that in another video. You can see that the size was 189 bytes, which is related directly to the fee per byte that they paid, resulting in a fee of $2.33, which is deducted from the amount of coins that they're sending. So their input is 170, the output is 167, which is this minus $2 and whatever. The, the numbers change because the exchange rate keeps changing. Okay, so we're gonna look at what, what makes this like our simple example. So you can see that they had an input. This is their send address. They've confirmed that they have the spend key. It's a very simple transaction. They have a one output address, which is this receive address. And you can see that this receive address has, has received. So this is just like, in our example, it's just like when the bank sent a player 1,500 coins. I hope you found this video helpful on understanding what a blockchain is, what wallets are, how gas fees work. I think this is a good place to leave the first video uh, since there's a lot of information here and you can go on Blockchain Explorer yourself and you can investigate transactions and now maybe understand a little bit better what you're looking at. Next time I think we'll talk about NFTs. They're a really hot topic right now, but knowing how wallets and transactions work is critical to understanding that. Uh, NFTs are really exciting. They go into smart contracts. You can build automated machines, all kinds of amazing, amazing things. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you want me to continue making videos in this series, please hit the subscribe button, hit the link button, maybe leave me a comment with anything you didn't understand, and I'll try to uh, clean that up next time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a happy holiday, and thank you for watching.